how to travel back in time. Also very far away at the same time. I, I think I know exactly These how we're going to do this. Islands we're going to do this, like obviously, geographically. Also, if you wait till like December 31st and like the new year, you, you can also do something like that, too. I'm guessing we're going to jump into that. Between them, through the Bering Strait. There is the maritime oh, this is, border shared by the yes, United that's States right, and that's Russia. Yes, that's right, that's right, and Russia. Oh, we've map, covered this before. The distance between the two islands looks very small, and it is indeed only five you kilometers. You can go back in one year. You can even walk between Russia and United States wow. as the Bering Strait is completely frozen. Yes, and, and that's exactly how like early humans made it from the continent of Asia to North America. Although back then it was a lot easier to do that because there was more stuff frozen up here. Man would walk the distance in one hour. But oh, starting wow. from the Little Diomede at 10 a.m. in the morning, you'll arrive on the Big Diomede at 8 a.m. on the following day. Ten, uh. This small journey will technically take around 22 hours. This is because of the time zones. Russian side has the GMT plus 12, while the USA side has the GMT minus 9. This is where if you walk from Russia it to gets USA, real... You will practically travel back in time with 20 hours. It gets real wonky with that, that Pacific line there. Pretty much everything left of this line are some of the First Nations to enter into a new year. So you can travel back in time up here between Alaska and Russia, and you can also jump forward in time. This is like Inception. Think of that reality explained. Please go subscribe. People why is Sweden not Turkey in NATO? Is... Well, Sweden is actually now in NATO, but why weren't they? Hungry tried to block Sweden from joining NATO. Oh, yes. why? At the beginning of the war doing in that for Ukraine, a minute. Sweden and Finland both applied to join NATO out of fears that Russia could and invade And Finland them. did it like Finland a full year beforehand. NATO on April 4th of 2023. But Sweden yep. is still waiting to be a member because ah, Turkey and Hungary are waiting not to anymore. There's been Turkey's some new developments. for this is because Sweden has placed an arms embargo on Turkey and Turkey has complained that there are terror but groups in Sweden that they, are acting against Turkey's interests. But they got Turkey, from what I've read. It was Hungary that was the last holdout for a while there. Such as the PKK. However, Sweden resolved both of these issues with Turkey, which led to Turkey recently signing yeah, to go. admit Sweden to NATO. So Hungary it's only has Hungary. Hungary ratified Sweden's membership because it states that Sweden has a hostile attitude towards Hungary and wants those really? grievances addressed before letting Sweden into yeah, NATO. Yeah, a little complicated. They came to the understanding but it's crazy that these two countries held out for so long, like a whole year. It's funny because when you now Google NATO maps, there's so many of them that are out of date, whether they don't have Sweden or they don't even have Finland at times, or they don't have their flags over here. I wonder who will be next. Thank you for that, Uncovered Geo. If, if World, World War, War III, III breaks, breaks out, out, and you don't have a bunker, where can you hide? Six most so this video doesn't make any sense for Albanians. I think each Albanian has like five bunkers. Okay, actually, that's not true. But three Albanians could share one single bunker around like three or four and these things are definitely big enough usually to fit three or four i mean it kind of depends you also get some neighbors in their own bunkers Remote places you can escape first to. of all i think i already know the answer to this question the video is proposing it's new zealand i mean there's going to be other things besides new zealand there probably are better islands but new zealand is the biggest country that would probably not be affected by like a nuclear war or world war three first pack your bag to greenland it's oh, very well, peaceful greenland. and far from everyone except canada which well, makes yeah. it not remote enough. Uh, but do you want to live in Greenland? <laughs> That's the only thing. It's a little cold up there, and there's a reason why they have less than 40,000 population. Oh, sorry, it's 56,000, even though they still are the biggest island technically on Earth. Meanwhile, the Faroe Islands has about the same population up here. Okay, not Escape Greenland, not Faroe Greenland. Islands. Oh, there you go. I knew that they were going to do that. Denmark. I don't know why it's I knew that. From every Both territories are actually owned by Denmark, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands. Other country. But close to the UK, which yeah, also you makes still it wouldn't want to enough. do. Yeah, those first two options, I'm good. I'll pass on that. What other options do we got? I'm from California, by the way, so I'm gonna keep that in mind geographically where I would have to go. So escape to New Zealand. But yeah, do you want here to be you go. More remote than okay, so they he admitted New Zealand is probably the biggest and most popular destination of choice by probably most of the world if there was some sort of nuclear apocalypse. Back up right now and move here to Cocos Island. Yeah, it has a combined population of just 600 people. Oh wow, maybe that's too many people. Then escape what, even to less? Island. What is that island in the Pacific? It's the most remote place. I think that's going to be number one in this video. It's like 3,000 miles west from Chile. Currently over 50 inhabitants here. Is it this? Oh, it might be this one. is actively encouraging people to move here. Oh, but wow. if you want absolute total here, escape here it is, from everything else in oh, the world, maybe. Oh, it's then Antarctica? go to Tristan da Cunha. It oh, is I actually did not think he would choose this as the, the final one. It's the most remote inhabited island in the world. 
It has 250 oh. people and has just one police officer. This is taken into consideration, I guess, population and remoteness. Uh, but when you Google most remote island, this does pop up as the most remote and inhabited island in the world. That's an article by CNN. They're claiming like nobody lives there. Inhabited maybe is not necessarily nobody lives there at, at some points. I just don't know why you would want to live in an island specifically without other people. Like, I, I don't think I would want that. I'd want to be in a secluded island, but I'd still want people to be around. Like, I don't want to have to build all the new shacks or whatever, figure out how to make an iPhone again. I think this would definitely be my place of choice. And, you know, like I said, I'm from California. I could probably just take like a kayak down here. That'd take like, what, one day? Somewhere around there. I don't know. Is that true though? The British government actively want more people to move here? Literally the first, uh, first auto result. <laughs> Holy crap, 67 people live here. I wonder how you can even get, it's the most remote, so like you definitely would have to take some sort of a ferry. How, how do you get there? You probably need to be British since it's British territory. There's obviously no airports, you can only get there by boat. You can join the Claymore 2, which leaves from this port. So that is also extremely secluded. You can't even see it if you zoom out far enough. Okay, so this is the only way to get there. Wow, this would not be fun. I'm gonna have to resort to like Polynesian tactics, the way they use the stars and the light in the sky to sale. Think of that, the map spy. Top 8 longest wars in history. Okay, this one's gonna be interesting because there's definitely been wars that have gone on for over a hundred years. There's literally something called the Hundred Years War, but I'm thinking that's not gonna be number one here, but let's see. Top 8. Okay. We have the ya Yaki's War, which is, is this a native? Was this a native versus New Mex New Spain when it was New Spain that Mexico and it was still a colony? 400 years, that's actually kind of crazy. Did Spain just not want to deal with them? They weren't actively fighting that that much? Byzantine and Arab Wars, of course. I mean, of course, Byzantine ended up taking the L there for 400 years. The Russo-Ukrainian Wars for over 400 years. Wait, a little ironic there. The Crusades. Oh, you're combining. I think they're, this is interesting the way they're defining this. This is one way to define it. Byzantine and Bulgarian Wars over 600 years. The Roman-Persian Wars over 600 years, and then the Anglo-French War, okay, yeah, yeah, the way you're doing it is a little bit interesting. I, I wish it was one solid defined conflict. Then again, it's kind of hard to define certain conflicts. The Reconquista maybe is a good example. Thank you for that, Geographer. Technically, Wikipedia has the Muslim conquests of the Indian subcontinent going on for a thousand years. Then it's the Reconquista. Then there's also the Dutch Skilly War, which technically lasted 335 years. Is that one of those things because they forgot that they were still at war for like a long time? Like here's an interesting one, the war in Afghanistan by the US. I mean, that was like 20 plus years. Technically, there's still a war going on in the Korean Peninsula. That's been 70 years. It really it just depends on how you define these. Simply Greater Hungary. Hungary would send like 128 divisions to Nono Germany and Italy during World War II. I like the Hoi 4 in the background. Uh, where is Greater Hungary behind what? Japan declared war on the U what? Simply Greater Hungary, Apollo. Oh, Hungary would like to send, okay, because yeah, Hungary along the axis. I mean, 128 divisions would be nice until Japan declares war on the US. Best ally ever for his size. Unfortunately, it is with a width division of 0.1. Europe is disliked by most of the world. And really? these are the reasons. Firstly, what? colonialism. Oh. So in <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Guess I forgot something there. Colonialism. Oh. So in the 1600s, 1600s, these five or six boys decided to conquer every city. It's interesting that they kept Italy in that in that map because yeah, did Italy colonize? They did. Did they do it well though? Six boys That's a whole decided to conquer story. every single nationality. <laughs> they tried Colonialism to do it better. resulted in the exploitation of land. The UK this filling is, yep. their museums with foreign architecture and some foolish borders that cause conflicts oh. to this day. I mean, Secondly, it's just both world wars were caused by this continent. Love that this uh, info hub, the creator here, highlighted Austria when it came to started world wars. Technically, Europe didn't do everything. It was all Austria. By this Franz Ferdinand the or the mustache man, the painter. Battles were fought in Africa, uh, Canada, Australia, and the British Raj sent millions of men to fight for European powers. Not to yes. mention Germany declaring war on the USA for literally no reason. Uh,
no reason. I mean, they did it because Japan declared war on them, and Japan had a bunch of reasons, and the U.S. was literally helping the U.K. They were, they were fighting the U.K. at that time. But anyways, good video. Hilarious that I didn't think about this. I guess I just don't really think about a lot of places despising this continent. <laughs> Let's do this subject next. If Europe was a class, we have uh, Russia being the bully, uh, France being the cool kid, the U.K. being the rich kid. Wouldn't Switzerland kind of be the rich kid? Spain's the class clown. Uh, Turkey is the loner. Is Turkey the one that says don't come to school tomorrow? Uh, Irish is the drunk kid. The talented kid is the Poland. The, the twins, old friends, turned into huge rivals. They're now like literally all in gangs fighting each other. Okay, that's one way to look at Europe as a class. Thank you for that, Enfe Mapping. What if Germany and Britain switched places? I'm pretty sure I did a video about this once. I think I swapped Germany and the UK, but we'll see. Firstly, if Germany had this advantageous location, it would have colonized I'm even trying... more of the world than the UK was able to. Yes. Meaning the United States would be called Die Vereinigtenstaaten. And yes. German would be the most widely used language in the world. Yes. Secondly, the UK's location was among the biggest reasons why it defeated Germany in World Yep, that small strip of land, the English Channel, made the UK so incredibly historically powerful. That is the biggest thing that kept them so strong. War two, meaning once they figured out, like, oh, all we have to do is build ships and never let anyone get to our island, we're gonna be good. They've never had, like, the strongest army. They're just, like, investing entirely in the Navy. If the UK were located here, it would have been almost impossible for it to deter the German invasion leading to its surrender. Well, that's this gets a little bit crazy because we're now assuming that the Germans would then turn into the no-no Germans, even if they were on that island. Less defeating the USSR would still be highly unlikely. Okay, hold on. We back, we've got a bag up here. One second. Advantageous location. Okay, this I all agree with. Of course, of we would all be speaking German. It, I mean, it really just comes down to like the British were already big in their navy as protection. They just kept on building that navy. They explored the world, conquered the world. Simple enough. I agree with all that. World than the UK was able to, meaning the United States would be called Die Vereinigtenstaaten. Yes, and then maybe we would be using the black, red, and yellow on our flag. I don't know. And German would be the most widely used language in the world. It'd be interesting to see, like, Germany was never, like, that big of a colonizer, how they would have organized their colonies as well. Would they have done it in a similar way that the British kind of organized their colonies? They probably would have had the same strategic interest, anyways. World. Secondly, the UK's location was among the biggest reasons yes, why it defeated Germany I agree with in this. World War Two. Meaning, if the UK were located here... See, we're assuming that the Germans would have to lose World War One, and then they would still turn to fascism. See, this war that it doesn't really break, it doesn't, yeah, go down as much. I've heard, like, philosophically, Germany, they needed to always expand because of their vulnerability geographically. That's why they were always so aggressive. So maybe in this version, the British would also be extremely aggressive. Here, it would have been almost impossible for it to deter the I mean, German- they're smack dab in the middle of this continent, so th there's- they have to like- Yeah. Invasion leading to its surrender. Uh, yes. Okay, so basically, if Nono Germany controlled the islands and was attacking continentally, then yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have- they would have won. I agree. Nonetheless, defeating the yeah, USSR and then, was- and then without- they, there would be no two-front war. Actually, maybe with the U.S. This is actually a really interesting uh, thought experiment. If they were on the islands, they would have a huge navy, probably a big enough navy to stop the U.S. in the 1940s. I mean, it'd be, like, somewhat competitive. At the beginning of World War II, the Royal Navy was the strongest navy in the world and the largest number of warships built with naval bases across the globe. So that would mean that Germany would start World War II with probably the biggest navy in the world, meaning that they could probably hold back the U.S. in the Atlantic Ocean, depending on how much the British from continent continental Germany would take out, which I don't think, yeah, this is getting a little complicated. I do agree, they would, they would probably win here, yeah, they probably would win. Austrian painter? Nah. How about an Irish painter? That's a good comparison. Germany and Austria speak German, Ireland and the UK speak English, it would come from the neighbor, he would come from the neighbor. German Raj, interesting sound to that. We really like this idea map, lad, I'd like to see more. Please go subscribe to all these channels. And big thanks to my patrons. Kansas was mentioned. Dude. Bag fat normal Carmel amateur archaeology the beautiful Megan Edward Frederick Hedlin Hedlin without Inquisitor Jack Straven's annoying friend Lugsenberg loves heavy if you the hear pie. this I love the Mexican 760 and Zany Boy 